Hey friends, how are we doing? A very warm welcome, either if you're new here to the channel for the first time or if you're returning, a very warm welcome back. Uh, my name's Heath Holm. This is a week 10's live stream. Uh, today I'm going to be exploring a new music idea. That's the theme of today's uh, live stream in Ableton Live 12. I didn't go for a cheesy clickbait kind of title, um, but let's just say the sources of inspiration for today's idea musically are none other than some of my favorite producers and maestros in the electronica, let's say music category, Bicep, Over Mono, Joy Orbison. So that's kind of the th the musical sort of direction I'm going to go be going in today with this new idea and hopefully this new idea is something that I can then do a series of videos on like I have done previously where I take this new idea and bring it through the next processes arranging it automation adding automation and then eventually mixing it so hopefully you will find what we're doing today beneficial as well as let me know if you'd like to see that series of videos if you would find that also useful and beneficial also i have a quick question i'd love to hear your thoughts i'm going to run a couple of polls on it but i was just wondering out there how many people think that uh, you know music theory is an important skill to have when it comes to producing electronic music i asked this question as recently i was listening to the guys from Bicep talking about their production process and during that discussion uh, the most common um, recommendation or advice they give to upcoming new music producers who ask what should I do first is learn piano and learn music theory so I'm really curious to your thoughts on that drop drop in the comments below if you like let me know what your thoughts are if you're in the live stream at some point, uh, if anyone can let me know how my levels are, that's the microphone and then the music obviously once we get going. So let's get started with that. And talking about music theory, um, last week I had some MIDI controllers, a couple of options plugged in, but latency was a little bit difficult over OBS and YouTube. So hopefully today I've kind of got that um, out of the way and um, I can actually play the things in because that is my preference. So my preference is rather than programming with musical things is to play it in. So let's start with a grand, just a simple grand piano from Ableton's uh, instruments. And let's drag and drop that onto a blank MIDI track here. And I think for starters, I'm going to choose A minor as the scale today. Uh, why A minor? It's the minor key. Uh, natural A minor is the minor key that is only white notes. So I'll explain why in a little bit, but um, hopefully it will make sense uh, soon why A minor, um, because as I said, it's all the white notes and it's um, a minor scale. So that's a, I think a good place to start. Let's also have um, a tool here so you guys and girls can maybe see um, what kind of notes and stuff I'm playing, as I'm sure some of you might like to see that going in live. So let's have a little device that will show that up, a little Max for Live patch. And we can turn off a lot of things that it does show. We really just need to see what we can see up the top here. And that should do us, right? So now I'm going to, let's say for the moment, just have the metronome on. And yeah, that's all fine. And I'm going to try playing some chords and see what idea I kind of want to roll with today. That was a pretty good first go. I think I'm just going to play it again just to give myself a choice. Okay, another time round. OK, 
Okay, lovely. So as I didn't use the record function, you know, always a feature that I absolutely adore about Ableton Live is the capture. And you know, that so many times has either saved my bacon, as we say in that expression, or it's allowed me to just work with the freedom of what I was just doing without the concern that, oh, did I record it? At, you know, this extra stress and pressure that I'm recording it. So here's the chords. We've got a few takes there. I might actually do what I often do, which is just make an extra copy of that. And the reason why I play it in is because I want all this lovely kind of, you know, natural things that happen when you do that. So all the velocity is different. There's the expression of how I played each chord. There are some sort of note lengths that are going to be different. And that's kind of, again, when we're thinking about this music that some of the maestros like Bicep do, and they encourage music theory, that's what you're going to get from that programming. This is possible, but it, it, it's not happening straight away. I think it's easier to practice this and get good at it, and then you'll find that it actually goes a lot faster. So down here, I'm going to call this one the original, just in case we need it. Back up to the clip here that I've kind of got in the loop. And this is the area I'm going to keep for now. So I'm going to right click in here and I'm actually going to crop that to be the chord progression for today. And then we can kind of look at the quantization and see is there anything here that we want to kind of change in regards to it. So let's play it back. So quite nice, so maybe either manually or you know, using some of the tools we have in Ableton here, we could kind of tighten this up a little bit or tidy it up. One of the options we could do here is go Command A on all the notes down here, and then I could go into my clip envelope properties over here and hit legato. That's gonna join all those chords up, so let's have a listen to that. The only thing is we, I ended up with a little bit of a, a chord here in front that I don't need. So I'm just going to grab that and pull that out the way as that's not part of this uh, clip that I want to keep. So again, actually what I will do is just, that's what that, that's what that's happening. Okay, that's fine. Right now, so there we are focused on the clip. Actually what I've done uh, there, interestingly enough, I'm not sure kind of what happened there, but let's try that again. I think, I believe, no, that's right. It is legato, that's fine. Okay, so let's play that back now. I particularly like this last chord change that doesn't change exactly on the beat. Uh, the others do, so that kind of gives us a light, nice bit of spice and we're in eighth notes, the grid in the background at the moment. So let's say that this first chord's here, let's open transform, go in here, go to quantize, and I'm gonna have the start of the note and I wanna bring that over to the one. So just like that, that's fine for me. Second chord, I'm going to do kind of the same. And if this kind of happens, well, we can kind of take this note and just nudge that back over there manually. Um, same with this chord, just getting the start of the note where I'd like it. And this chord, I might leave it where it is, but let's say we butt it right up against there and see how that sounds. Nice, all right, so let's try now a bit of a faster tempo. So let's come up to say 128. I think that's the tempo I'm going to make the rest of the track in today. So what else could we do here? We can also voice these chords a little bit better. By that I mean sort of where the chords change. So quick lesson in voicing. Um, you know, when you revoice chords, like obviously again, this is all played in by hand, but if we revoice them, what we're looking for is the smoothest transition from chord to chord. Any sort of big jumps or kind of large, you know, jumps. So for example, if this chord had that note um, or the whole chord was sort of like, you know, up here somewhere, that's not gonna be a very smooth transition from the chord in front or the chord afterwards. So if we're looking at the first two chords here, we'll notice that they share this note. And so a simple inversion here 
of the first chord will make these two chords share the same top note. By that I mean when you look at this chord here, we actually have shared top note, shared middle note, these are four note chords, shared third, and so those intervals are all shared but this top note is up so if I just click on that shift down arrow that makes it a smoother transition because this already is, an, is a sharing the same top note so as long as we're sharing a note if it's the middle the third that's going to make that transition nice and smooth so just make sure it's the same position in the chord so if it's this one this one needs to be in the same position right so over here again we don't have any notes that are the same but you see over here, we do have a note the same. So we could again invert that chord if we like, and that would mean that these two chords are joined. It's just these two that we don't have currently any common notes, right? Well, we do actually at the bottom here. So now that's actually smoothed that right out perfectly. Nice. And so again, in the theme of bicep, in the theme of playing things in, in the theme of music theory, you know, we're looking for certain emotion, a certain kind of feeling from these chords and from this music. And that's again what those guys and other girls and guys are doing is, you know, looking at a scale and a key and moving around that key and scale and finding the emotion. You know, obviously I'm in a YouTube live stream. I'm not going to be spending super amount of time with that but I'm really happy with those four note chords and so far the feeling of this currently it was a minor that I started with right hi Jay Francisco how you doing my friend hopefully uh, if you've got a second and you're still there let me know if the microphone level is okay please and also the music levels that would be super helpful all right so why did I start with the grand piano well again it's a very neutral musical instrument it's no preset with reverbs and delays and all sorts of fancy uh, you know modulation and automation or effects and things there's no confusion here as to whether that sounds nice or not it's a good starting point right and if you don't like working with the piano just go to the instruments and grab any of the Ableton synths and just have them more or less as a basic sine wave wavetable as a basic sine wave analog if you drop it in it'll be a sawtooth so you know just gives you a basic tone right to hear your chords. If we drag in operator, we get, again, just a sine wave. So you've got neutrality, a bit like the piano, so I would really recommend that you do your musical parts like that. Perfect, thank you very much, Joe Francisco, for letting me know the levels are okay. That's great, good news. Obviously, there's going to get, things are going to get a little bit louder as we ramp it up with more sounds and things. So that's the starting point. I'm going to now, uh, let's choose a synth. I'm going to have Wavetable on here to play back those chords. We can get rid of the metronome. And let's say now we maybe start with a little bit of a drum beat to go with this um, chord idea. And I'm going to write a, a break beat, so that's kind of um, what I'm aiming for there. Let's say drum kit wise, what are we going to use? Well, again, if we're thinking of Bicep, they are really big fans of all the analog drum machines, the 808, the 909, the SP1200 from EMU. That's the kind of things they use. I think I've got an EMU kit maybe that I made, like a drum rack. Let's have a look. So yeah, I've built up a rack, I believe, of the EMU, so I could use that, or maybe so that we don't do something that you can't have access to. Let's say we go 909, or 808, let's go 808, let's go down that road, and let's go to the packs of Ableton, or the core library, and we should see, you know, that if we say kit, you know, we, we come here and we've got the core 808 kit, right? So what I'm looking for that for the moment is a kick drum. Let's turn on this. And let's make our length of the clip a couple of bars long. And let's say we're going to have a kick pattern a bit like this. Uh, okay, maybe like that. Let's go one more. So we've got a four bar loop. OK, 
Okay, and now uh, let's have maybe a snare or rim shot. This one's out, so let's fix that up. This last little one went a bit weird. And let's make a little bit of a variation or two here of the kick drums, we'll have a bit of a ghost note or something in here. So let's open up our velocity at the bottom. Okay, let's do a bit of a levels balance here for a second. So quite like a clap to go with that rim shot, but maybe I'll do something with the clap where we'll go outside of the 808 kit so we've got something a bit unique or different, shall we say. And we could kind of copy the MIDI over because I want the clap to follow the, um, the pattern of the rim shot and I'm gonna layer it with the rim shot. So I could do it inside the 808, right? So we could layer the rim shot with some of those sounds, but for the moment, let's try something a little bit more interesting perhaps, and let's have from here some other kind of clap so we get a little bit of something different. Let's say we want a one-shot clap. Again, I'm sticking to Ableton's packs uh, and Ableton, in Ableton Live instruments, so you should be able to follow along with this yourself rather than samples from outside. Yeah, something, yeah, something a little bit more. So we try this one. Need to move our MIDI up to the C3 note. Okay, I'm gonna go through here a bit more. That's nice. Let's kind of listen to it with the rim shot and see what it's adding with the two together because we don't wanna make the rim shot disappear, otherwise there's no point having it there. So if we look at this a little bit, let's bring, so we can hear the rim shot. This could be the body and the tail and the rim shot could be kind of the transient area or we could flip this, right? And have it the other way around. But I think I kind of like the idea like that for now of the layer of the two. And this could become a third, three layered kind of clap rim shot at the moment, right? Just to have something a little bit interesting uh, in terms of the sounds. Uh, so it's not, you know, just a bog standard rim shot, 8 to 8 rim shot. Let's adjust the envelope a bit. Let's pop the kick in. Cool. So I've got a basic kind of groove going there. I'm just gonna do a, a little bit of housekeeping so I know what's what. 
Let's label label these up. And that is my 808, so that can stay the same. So now let's maybe work on the synth sound for a second. Also, we could try out perhaps some hi hats from in here. And also while we're at it, let's work on this rim shot for a second a little bit here. And let's have the velocity for the rim shots slightly randomized. So let's say not too much, but. So it's again, it's got a bit more of an organic feel to it. And we'll do the same with the clap and it will obviously be different because uh, I'm not gonna copy that MIDI over. So that will allow this to be something a little bit different to the rim shot, which will add again, a bit more character. And we I kind of want this kind of rolling groove that we could virtually, you know, listen to for a long time without getting too bored with the groove. So. That's part of the mission today. Let's also say we want some hi-hats then. Maybe we'll go for some off-beats, 808, closed. Listen to this hi hat if we pitch it down slightly. Let's check it out over here. Maybe also just a little bit of sound design work on it just to. Give it a bit more character. Sounds very kind of, not sure how to describe it, but very clean, very, not, not that, not as interesting as it could be. So a little bit of erosion on it. just to add a bit of character. Not super motivated by that hat sound, but we might come back to it. I like the pattern, but yeah, you know, for now, not sure I'm gonna keep that particular sample, let's say. Okay, so now let's work on our chords. And let's see what we could do with the synth sound a bit so we can have it a bit more interesting.
Just super basic for now. Now let's have a look where we are in terms of pitch on the keyboard and on the piano. So we're up in this octave range at the moment, which gives us some room for some basses and some pads and things like that. We're certainly, we could even maybe go down slight an octave lower on these. All right, so firstly, I wanna keep this synth nice and basic just to get a little bit of uh, a sound like this going. Maybe I'll give it a little bit of movement so that it's not too static. So let's have a little bit of modulation happening inside of here. Well, actually, I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to keep it quite simple for a second. We'll see how this goes. Uh, this is all kind of improvised, right? I'm thinking on my feet as I go along. So let's pop up here and we'll have a look for my friend Paul Stretch. And I'm going to drag that over and drop it on an audio track. Uh, I have shared this device before. If you, you're not familiar with it, it has to be one of the top five best free plugins going around. And it's an amazing way to kind of come up with drones and pads and various uh, stretched sounds, let's say. So my idea here at the moment is to feed these chords and this basic synth sound into Paul Stretch. What we need to do th to do that is we've dropped Paul Stretch on this audio track here that was free. And we now want to say to Paul Stretch or audio track four, listen to track three, which has the wavetable, turn it to in. And so now when we push play, we should be able to come over here to this record button over here on the Paul Stretch and start recording in some music from those chords. There we go. That's job done on that side. So now what we can do here for a second is turn these chords off and we can now play back the pull stretch and have a listen to what it sounds like and mess around with this a little bit to come up with some kind of like paddy drone type layer that's just gonna bubble away. Let's maybe make it a bit louder. And then let's stretch it more. And we can kind of EQ it inside the pull stretch, let's say if we turn on the filter here, you can we can kind of filter high and filter low. So by that we can kind of high pass filter it or low pass. I want to use the low cuts here, thin it out a little bit. So it's not going to get in the way in the future of bases and things like that. And then if we want to re-pitch this, we can also do that up or down. So if you use the pitch shift, we're working in semitones. If we come over here in frequency, we can get much more weirder kind of sounds because it can get very sort of like, you know, spooky or kind of much more weirder and interesting because it's in between the lines of semitones. It's by frequency. So, you know, if you're looking to make something kind of quite dark or unusual, Frequency by by it be your friend. I'm kind of happy with the pitch for now. Just have to a moment for that to reset itself. So let's say we stop it for a second. So I'm going to pop that down for a moment and just balance the volumes. And if we're kind of happy with that pull stretch idea already, 
uh, what, what we could do straight away is because right now it's just trapped inside the plugin essentially what's going on here um, and also by the way you can down at the bottom here where you see the waveform you can also draw and loop up little sections of it so absolutely love this plugin um, if you want me to do a deep dive in the future on it drop it in the comments below and we can kind of look at a little bit even further as to what it can do but this is a good look at how you can use it to make your own kind of pads and things like that so what I'm going to do is just actually bring this back down for a second oh, that was the wrong one not the volume but the stretch that way it resets the pitch again because it was so long the stretch was so long that it was kind of staying on that bit of that weird frequency that I added before because it's going on for a long time uh, it's stretched this out for however many bars so I kind of want it to have that chord feel that you just heard now I'm going to stretch it a bit again So you can see it's taking a lot longer time now to get itself around. So let's say something like that. Let's close the pull stretch. Let's have another audio track next door. And once again, we, as you can hear, the pull stretch is just going to keep going and going and going. Well, what we're going to do now is kind of render this down into a bit of an audio loop that we can use in the track. So let's say audio from track four. Again, switch it off a second. It's gonna listen in. You can see here, it's getting the input from the pull stretch. Now we can arm this track, hit record. One, two, three, four. And now that's the result of the pull stretch going in here. And there's a lot of variation as you can probably see in the waveform. So you can let this go on for a long time if you want a very very long you know clip of this kind of pad drone sound going in the background maybe you want it to not be sort of like a small loop that keeps repeating uh, that it's something that's 32 bars long or I promise I will stop it soon. Right, so let's see how we get on with that. So now with the pull stretch, we can kind of go into it and we can hit the pause button and we can kind of switch it off and that could be reused several times if we like um, if we want to use it to do something else so we might just label that pull stretch and then we know what's in there it's all switched off it's not taking any cpu and it's currently holding the bit of audio that i recorded before but we could again you know use it to do another take or something else now we've got this audio loop let's turn this audio track into an audio track so we need no inputs and now we've got the results of that and let's say we might just loop it up here for the moment right or go for somewhere else but I do like this kind of area and then what I could do this is the reason I kind of kept the synth quite basic that was making the original sound is I can then kind of make this recorded audio with effects be a little bit more interesting right so we can kind of add some auto pan to it have it move around a little bit. So it's not gonna be super static. We got all sorts of possibilities. So we can come back and process this a bit later. We could add some chorus to it. Some reverb would sound nice on this. Right, so I don't want that sound to be 
static. I want it to kind of have a bit of interest. It's kind of why I didn't choose to make the synth too crazy because I'm using this, going to use the synths for other things. I just wanted to sort of send in a basic sound that I'm going to, on, in audio in this sense, um, adjust it using effects and automation and things like that. So it will be inter interesting, it won't be left alone. And we can also do lots of fun stuff like we could go in uh, into here. Let's just label it. Um, pad drone. Perfect. Uh, we could also go into here and we could change down here. Let's keep it in beats and we could say not transients, but say 16th. Use the preserve. Get that really nice feeling, right? So we've created a nice little layer for ourselves. Now we can bring the chord track back in and we could kind of say, let's sort of undo a little bit of what was happening. There's not much going on. As I said, I avoided any modulation at all. And maybe we keep the chords in the same octave or we go back up. Because right now they're going to drown out that quite a lot. Okay, so nodding to the maestros again of the influences for today's video, that being uh, Bicep over Mono, uh, Joy Orbison, those kind of uh, producers, that's the kind of idea that I was aiming for here. Um, I'm going to use again this chord progression that I started with today. It's gonna, it's created the pull stretch pad drone. It's going to lead us to a bass line. It might lead us to the melody, and then we might also use the chords as they are as well. So we're kind of this track is going to evolve from the very traditional chord progression evolving to being the 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 full kind of harmonies and musical idea of the track. So. By the way, if you're enjoying the content on this channel and you're finding it beneficial and you're taking something away, please do like, uh, comment if you've got something, you a question or something you'd like to comment about the videos, a suggestion for the future, and do hit that subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot and obviously you can stay in touch with knowing that the, when the next video is going to come out. All right, so had a little idea for a bit of a... Let's say we head off the music idea for a second. Let's build up the drums a bit more. So we'll just mute the chords for a second. And let's have another MIDI track, a blank one. And let's also have an audio track for a second. And let's again stick to Ableton Live's packs that come with the suite so that you can essentially kind of follow along with this. And let's say we look for some percussion loops. So let's say loop and percussion. And ideally mixed percussion would be great. So by that, I mean not just one type of percussion. I don't, I'm not sure if we've got anything like that in here, but we'll just work our way along and see what we find. This one could be one, potentially, as it sounds like it's got more than one sound going on. So I'm just gonna drag and drop it on that audio track. Another one that could be a potential candidate. Jemby one sounds interesting. Another one that's kind of interesting. Don't 
that's cool but not kind of what I'm looking for all right I think we'll try with what we've got up here so let's take one of these I might play it for a second along with the idea here but it's not going to stay like this it's going to get uh, modified in a moment but let's say we try and pick the one that sort of seems to fit best the t tonality of what's going on at the moment I think this one's really interesting so that would be my choice for now so what I'm going to do is this is this mixed percussion loop kind of that's come out of the Ableton's packs Ableton live packs over here from sweet I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to slice it to a new MIDI track it's going to make a suggestion here 16th notes is great I'm very happy about that and I'm going to use the built-in slicing preset that's going to give me 64 slices so I'm going to say okay to that so I'm going to move that over a little bit here and almost the work of that track with those the audio track with those loops on it is kind of done it was just to have a selection but maybe we revisit some of the others so now we've got that particular loop all sliced up into slices and we can kind of take a look at the individual slices here and see what they look like and a little tip here is sometimes if these slices are not very like close to the grid or sort of anything the timing isn't too good and you'd want to sort of manually adjust them which you can go and do you can manually adjust all of the slices you can always go back to the original loop or start by doing this in the first place and that would be to sort of highlight that loop at the very beginning and then we could use for example the the quantization um, to to kind of tighten that up if we like uh, tighten the hits up or we could right click on here and use the old menu that we have in Ableton say quantize settings let me see that is that happening somewhere behind interesting okay well I'm not actually seeing that but let's let's say I do it from down here which is going to do the same thing so I'll say 16th notes 100% amount apply and you can see here that that's tightened up all those hits then you can right click and then follow the same process to slice to MIDI that would mean that all of these individual slices are you know right on the on the grid let's say so that's a little tip there if you find it's too loose but um, let's see what what happened with how I did it before and over here we've got lots of little adjustments anyway with each slices that we can move the attack and the decay and the sustain and stuff so new MIDI clip below the clip that came with the slicing I don't want all of that actually for the moment that's not really relevant I want a brand new MIDI clip and I'm going to just come down to the first slice down here and if you've got the headphone icon you can preview all, all the slices I'm just going to come down to slice one and I'm going to give us a bar of 16th notes let's keep going let's maybe have again a four bar pattern so we can kind of like actually we'll just go backwards a second we can just do it this way there we go so we've got four bars of 16th notes down on slice one collaborating with Ableton Live 12's tools here what we could do now is kind of I want to spread this across the slices right I want to kind of I've got 64 slices to work with and I don't want like what it would currently sound like right I want to spread it out across all the different slices so looking at some of these tools that we have now in 12 I could go into transform turn on arpeggiate let's switch off transform for a second hi by the way if you're in the stream here do say hello in the in the chat it seems a bit quiet at the moment but if you are listening to uh, you are part of this live stream do drop a comment and say hello hopefully the levels are good uh, Jay Francisco let me know everything was fine earlier so hopefully that's continuing as I said give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying the content here but do say hello drop a comment let me know if you've got any questions fire them all in there all right so I'm going to use the arpeggiate function here in the transform I'm going to choose random which I think would be the most successful so if I leave it as up and I choose the rate of 16th notes gate at 100 distance 12 so the steps would be 
not only this pitch but two octaves higher as well included and I hit transform you'll notice nothing really happens so if you want to sort of arpeggiate a single note like this not a chord which would easily arpeggiate with these settings then you kind of have to think a little bit differently so I'm going to choose random and now we should start to see some action right and that's exactly kind of what I'm looking for so let's have a listen to that and let's say we we don't like that let's move some of these things around a bit All right, that's kind of cool, but I kind of realized I've got a problem with this loop um, that I don't wish to have that problem. So I'm gonna carry on with this same workflow, but I'm going to do another one of the loops. Um, I'm not sure if you spotted what the problem is, but for me personally, this particular one, I do like the original loop, which here it is over here. It's got too much low end in it for me, and that's just gonna end up clashing with my bass line that's to come in the future and, and the, the kick drum and things like that. I could go and mute out the bass hits, the slices in here, but I don't really think that's necessary. So what I'm going to do is just grab one of these other loops over here. So let's say one that's a little bit not so bassy. Yeah, the Djembe or this one would be the easier of the two to work with. So let's say maybe this one, it's very long, so we can make it less slices. So let's say we go for um, four bars or eight bars of this loop. Uh, right click in here. And let's crop that. That'll help when I go to slice it. And again, we could quantize it if we need. I kind of leave it as it is for the moment. Again, see what happens. So let's say slice the new MIDI track, all of that, 112 slices as you can see. So again, if we don't want so many, we could cancel that, come back here and just make it again a, another smaller loop. So it's not quite as big. That will help that process because I don't think we need all of those, that many slices, right? This gives us 64, it's a little bit more manageable. So let's bring that back over take the one I was just doing away and that I think I won't end up using but we'll just switch it off and park it over there and so again we've got the same sort of setup here but a different loop so all we need to do to get ourselves back on track is a new MIDI clip and again I'm just going to pop down to the bottom slice give myself a bar of that and then make it a little bit bigger so we've got a bit more MIDI to work with and then the same thing here Let's get the arpeggiator into the action. I'm happy with 16ths. Let's say we bring the steps down a bit there. All right. So as you can see, you can really stretch it out to reach a lot of the samples, if that's what you're looking for. Or we could also kind of choose an area we like, like this a little bit. Then choose Command A to select all of those notes, and then we can kind of move them up manually to other samples, right? Okay, so let's say we settle on that for a second. Just bring the volume down a little bit. Let's say we bring in a little bit of some changes here. So let's say we put a pitch MIDI effect in front of the rack. 
because we can see uh, in a second if we push play on this which samples we're kind of hitting on and where we are in the in the actual pads down here if we put the pitch here and then we do something like we add an LFO after the rack here and we map the LFO to the pitch we should as you can see we're going a bit too far at the moment but we're now kind of like even tr making some more variation right so we've got that arpeggio that we just created with Ableton 12's tools and now we're able to kind of use the pitch MIDI effect in an LFO and change a bit what's going on here so let's now say we bring the depth down a bit on the pitch so we're not going quite so big a range over here That's kind of cool, and I'd like sometimes that it goes outside of the pads because that kind of adds rest. So again, we're getting this generative kind of percussion groove that's quite unique, right? And if we want it to move fast, we can move fast. If we want it to go slower, we can slow our LFO down. If we don't want a sine wave, we could also have random that means obviously that's going to keep changing how the behavior of how it goes through the different pads so I think that's kind of a nice layer on top of what Ableton 12 did here right and also we could kind of tone this down if it's too chaotic you know we can go in here and we could again loop a favorite area quite like that for the moment already I think I'm gonna settle there for a moment quite like that and we could always go in here and you know again make some changes such as you know taking out some notes if it's just a bit too busy so this would be where a kick plays so we could say no 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 right and kind of customize that loop and with all the tools that we have here that are still on this channel, we can obviously go back and make more versions of this um, as, as freely as we like. So um, let's now have a little play with some other elements. And let's have a, a listen to a little bit the shaping the different slices a bit. So we might make them sort of much shorter. Right, so you can get really dialing in the volume envelopes of the slices here get really tight we could go the other way long release so this the slices are blending with each other we get sort of chaos like that so sound design wise lots of fun stuff here let's I'm just gonna undo that back to how, kind of where I had it Nice. Let's add an EQ behind this. Let's have the depth down even lower. Yeah. a little bit of delay on this track
That's quite an interesting percussion loop right now from how that's come about. And again, it's sort of slicing up a loop from the Ableton packs and then going in there and kind of turning it into something completely new using some of the 12 tools to arpeggiate, you know, a 16th note pattern. Um, let's also modify the velocity a little bit as well. Let's say we copy this down. So we've got a copy. It could be a variation for later and let's call this number one up here, the one that I've currently got here. And again, let's just crop that so that we're just working on these notes only. And then we can kind of say, okay. Nice. Let's have a bit of compression on this as well, just to glue it down a little bit. Going back. Just keep brings it under control a little bit, which I think is nice. Okay, so let's bring our drone in. Okay. Maybe another idea, let's see if we can fit it in. Uh, let's go to the packs. Uh, let's pop in here a new search and let's look for another percussion here. Let's have a tabla. Um, let's maybe just clear this away. So I'm thinking with a tabla to have a one shot, right? And maybe we can come up. with something interesting with this. So let's say on the MIDI track here, we're gonna drag the tabla down into the bottom here, into the simpler. And then let's do pretty much quite similar to what we just did uh, with the percussion loop. And let's actually just do a bit of housekeeping again. This is now a perk loop. Again, I'm just working on the basic groove at the moment, but uh, Generally, as you can see, I kind of have, have left some things intact down here. Uh, that was the slice. We, we don't really need that anymore. This is also the bigger loop, right? So maybe I make a, a two here, right? So I've got this current loop here. Maybe I'll switch this back on. And I have a second pattern. I think that's quite nice where I've landed there. So again, that could be pattern two. And now we've got a variation. Pattern one. Pattern two. So again, duplicate that down to keep the original. Let's label that original. And this one I'm going to get rid of now. I don't need that anymore with just all the slices across it. And then on this two, Again, I'm gonna pop in here, crop it just to that selection of notes. And I'm gonna do similar to what I did before. I'm gonna take out some hits and just minimize it a little bit, especially the ones where there's a kick drum happening. Nice, so we've now got, and funnily enough, when you do this sometimes, I actually prefer two now to one. So that might actually be the one and the other one might be the two variation. <laughs> Funny how that happens sometimes. I 
So what I might do is just add a little bit of gain on the, the master track just so that uh, through the stream it's not too quiet. But obviously I brought my levels down to get my mix going, but let's just pop a little bit of limiting here so it won't be quite so quiet in the stream. Hopefully, I mean, as I said, haven't uh, heard too much in the chat today, but uh, hopefully these levels are fine and you can hear everything. All right, the tabler idea. So we've got a tabler over here. Similar thing, I'm gonna do all 16th notes over here. And again, we could maybe roll the dice a couple of ways here. So let's say we go for the arpeggio, the same as I did with the perk loop. Um, let me switch off transform and I'm just going to tone it down a little bit. Let's also duplicate the clip so we've got more than one bar. I generally like to work in four bars or eight uh, so we can get some more variation happening here. And now we can sort of say, okay, um, random is going to be important again because we're not arpeggiating chords here. We're arpeggiating um, just a single note. And then let's say we put that up to 12 what we get it's a little bit fast at the moment Try some of the other tabla samples and see what, what we kind of prefer there. Could be nice, just something sort of more subtle like that. So again, we could sort of work from this particular arpeggiated pattern, kind of narrow it down a bit, minimalize it a little bit if we like, or perhaps we could even have this percussion loop talking to the other loop, let's say. So to do that, we could kind of say on this perk loop here that we make it two bars. This one let's 
pick a favourite first. Okay, maybe this area here. So let's say, again, we bring this down. This was the original take here. So we'll keep our workflow intact. And with this one, we're going to crop that area then and select those notes. And with this perk loop here, we've now got this space over here where it's not going to play. And what I'm thinking is with this one, we then make this one two bars long and we'll make this one play when the other one isn't playing. We can kind of do that by doing this. If we move the playhead here, um, I think we should achieve what we're looking for. We'll, what we might do is just open them both up like this so we can kind of see what's going to happen. Okay, so we kind of have it there. Let's have a listen. That was the idea behind that little experiment there. Once again, maybe take out some of these notes where, where there are important drums, minimalize it a little bit. I like to leave room for my hits, such as snares and claps and kicks to breathe. Okay, maybe a little bit of processing on this tabla loop. We'll come back to that later, but just a little bit of, again, EQing it. Do a copy of this and with the copy let's just try it without any beat preservation to 16ths let's maybe actually put it in complex or tones let's try tones Sorry, I haven't been looking at the chat for a moment, but I just noticed someone has dropped some comments there. Hi, Sim, how are you doing? Had no idea you could quantize audio like you demonstrated. Spent hours the other day trying to get a sample to fit my tempo. Well, um, that's great to hear that that helped you out with that. Um, just watch out for like, if, if we pop over there and take a look at, I think, whichever loop it was. Um, you know, obviously, yeah, if you right click on here or if you're in 12, you can do it down here. But um, just remember that when you do do that sort of level of quantization like I did here, which was 16th, 100% and applied it, it's very quantized, right? And often when you're working with audio, the magic is leaving it kind of quite loose. So potentially, um, 
you know, you might not want as, as heavy as, as that quantization. So I hope I'm making sense. What I could do is let's just find that loop and I'll just give you a quick demonstration of what I'm talking about. So it's called Charles something Charles. Let's see if we can find it. Charles Conger. Doesn't seem to be, ah, it's loop, okay. So that's it there, um, Conger loop 120 BPM. So if we bring that over and we look at it again, here is here it is without me doing anything, right? So back in the day, we'd right click in here without 12 and you still wanna do that, bring up quantize settings. But because I've got this open, I'm kind of actually able to do it here. So what I'm speaking about is before I really quantize this audio and it put it all bang on the grid. And sometimes we want that, that's 100% tighten that up. But a lot of the times actually the magic is a kind of in saying, okay, 16th notes is fine, but I actually want like about 88 or 78% quantization and then applying it. And so that's tightened it up, but not as tight, right? So I just wanted to give you that tip um, because you know, you've got a lot of flexibility in how much an amount, and if you don't like that, Command Z, and then you can go and try out another amount and then apply it and listen for, you know, don't remove the magic and soul from maybe this conga loop, this Charles conga loop was played by hand and it's got all this magic about it that if you over quantize it, you will take that, that away from it and it becomes a very static kind of, let's say over quantized loop. It's easy to do quantized loops in a software like Ableton. And if you're writing techno, that might be what you want is everything very straight and on the grid. What's not so easy is to get it more human and vibing and have feeling. So magic secret source often lies in how much you quantize it by, particularly if it's audio, like I said, real drummers, real percussion, whatever it might be. So I just wanted to point that out. Great to hear that it's uh, kind of, you know, helped you out there. So I'm really pleased about that. Um, thank you for your compliment as well. What was the shortcut to extend the number of bars in the loop playback? Okay, so I think what we're talking about there is potentially you might want to drop in the comment again in case I get this wrong, but uh, where I did this, is that what we were talking about perhaps? So what I did there is like, you know, essentially, let me bring that down. Let's make a copy of, well, actually let's use one because it's, it's not changed. Let's duplicate that down, give it another color. And let's say this is the one we're working on, right? Over here. We might've just actually made a bit of an error there. Let's just go backwards one second. Okay, because I think I just almost messed up what I'd, kind of done inside this clip, which I wanted to undo myself out of that. So let's say Command D to create a new one now, we should be good to go. All right, so if you're looking like this, there's two ways, like let's say we're zoomed in like that and we only think of it as a bar, right? Um, but we want more than that. We want that free space over there or we want to do something different. Well, we could either go over here to the envelopes on the left and look at length and just drag up with the mouse to have two, three, four, whatever, you know, we want to extend it by, or alternatively, you can grab these two um, arrows over here on the right, click left, just left click on your mouse, click down on them, and then you can drag them out to wherever you want to go. So, you know, if you're also doing polyrhythms, like in between actual phrases of bars, then you might want to drag it out like this, but you can also go here and you'll see the three numbers. So here you can do your polyrhythm in the other two boxes, right? That are normally zero if you're not doing that. So I hope that helps. Um, I think that's what you were speaking about. So let me know if I did answer that. Um, hopefully, yes. All right. So what have we got? Just going to catch myself back to where I was for a second. All right, so I kind of grabbed a little bit of a vocal sample, which I want to try out today and see if this kind of, if it kind of fits the idea. As I said, we're kind of giving without a clickbaity title on the video. Maybe I'll amend it later, but not probably not clickbaity. Um, this is a bit of a nod to it's a exploring a new music idea with the inspiration of you know some of the best in the business of the electronica, that being bicep for me personally over mono. Um, 
Joy Orbison, people like that. So that's where this music idea is kind of nodding, tipping the cap to those people. So I grabbed a bit of a, an exotic kind of uh, loop before. Maybe we don't need to see all the name, but it's, um, a, a, I believe it's a Kazakhstani uh, group perhaps, but I just kind of like the vocal. Okay, so Sim has answered me back there. Thanks, thank you. So that's it. Finally, how did you zoom in and out? Okay, again, I'm not quite quite sure what you mean there. Um, potentially, so if I look into there, are you talking about this little magnifying glass above the top of the, the numbers up here is how I go about that, right? So I kind of use that to pull in and pull down. So if you're over here, and this is all fresh air and you want to be focused in on this area here, then just you can actually restore that by just coming up here with the magnifying glass. And if it's set like that, right? So the bar is where all the notes are. If you sort of zoom in and then zoom out again, you bring it back to that selection. So now I don't see anything over here anymore, right? I've kind of like brought myself back to that area. So again, it's open like this. I say, okay, all my notes are there. I just want that area looped and I don't want to see any of this anymore. Then I can just sort of zoom in and then zoom back up and that just puts it back into that uh, section. Hey, thank you very much. Where, where are you coming from, Sim, by the way? Do let me know where you tuned in and listening from. And uh, thanks to you for your interaction here. It's nice to know somebody is watching the video and finding it beneficial. That's great. That's why we're doing it. All right, cool. Uh, let's hit play. So my little vocal sample yeah, that's a good question. Uh, with the magnifying glass, yes, you do. It's it's all about left clicking down. So you go above the numbers to bring up that little magnifying glass. Then you click down on your mouse and then you pull down and it actually works. So you click the mouse down when you see that and you can pull down to zoom in, pull up to zoom out. And it will also drag left and right when you click and hold it down. So that's the way to do that. You can also use plus and minus if you're a keyboard person. So this is the plus and that's the minus. So you can click in an area on your MIDI or audio, whatever it might be in that clip view and you can use plus and minus. That's really up to you. Okay, London town, nice. Hope the weather's nice there. <laughs> We're in Ibiza here at the moment and it's a bit gray and cloudy today I have to say, but the temperature's not bad. All right, cool. So. Hopefully that uh, gets Sim underway there and uh, let's have a play with this vocal. So for the moment, I'm just going to drag it in in audio into the project and maybe we bring it into the world of MIDI in a little bit. But let's say we bring it in in audio for the moment. Turn warping on and let's say we're going to have it in Complex Pro because it's a vocal and let's just have a listen to it. I'm probably going to loop up an area and try and find a bit that I kind of like. That's exactly kind of what I was looking for for the moment. Yeah, I think this is going to work quite well actually for a bit of luck there because um, I wasn't kind of working necessarily in the key of this vocal. But so far, certainly fitting with the drums, let's EQ the bottom end of it a little bit. So now I want to work on these chords here. 
So we've moved along quite nicely, uh, coming back to my chord progression that I began with today, playing it in, revoiced it slightly, and quantized it a bit. Um, you know, and then I made this very, I didn't make anything. This is a basic wavetable with two oscillators and a filter on it, right? So now I want to kind of look at using this chord progression for a couple of other parts, right? So let's say, let's try out one of, you know, um, the bicep kind of absolute favorite go-to things, which would be, we can do it a couple of ways here. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways um, they like often using uh, a gate of some sort, which would be, um, the idea would be a blank MIDI track. And what we're going to do on that blank MIDI track is just drop on a synth. Again, it doesn't really matter what that synth is. We can have operator on that track. And what we're going to do is have a MIDI clip and a pattern on this track. So let's say we open up a MIDI clip. And again, with 12, this is where it's quite interesting. We can mm -hmm. again put in a bunch of 16th notes like this. And this time I'm not gonna arpeggiate the, these, I'm looking for more like a rhythmical pattern. So I'm gonna go into transform. No, I'm not actually, sorry, change my mind. I'm going to generate. And let's make this again, more than one bar. Let's have a couple of bars. Let's make it four bars. So there we go. We've got four bars of middle C on the piano, just the 16th notes, right? We could also already randomize the velocity a bit probably do that in a moment, but I'm going to use the pattern section this time around and generate. I'm going to go to generate rhythm and I'm going to turn this into a new pattern. Right. And what we can do here is, you know, shift around the notes in the pattern, the how many steps there are, whether it's sparse or busy, uh, whether we split any of these notes. So if we start doing this, we get little splits. Uh, whether we shift the pattern around, you know, we can come up with, again, not just one and two, but we can have various different patterns here. Um, so let's say we just leave it like it looks for a second. We'll come back to that. It's just a random MIDI pattern at the moment with a synth, right? And with this synth, we're going to switch it off. We, we're not actually going to, it sounds like this. Let's bring the MIDI notes up to C3 just in a neutral position. We don't, we're not gonna actually listen to that. It's not gonna contribute at the moment anything musically. It's just a pattern, right? But what it's going to contribute is a gate or a pattern for something else to react to those MIDI notes, right? So I love this pattern generate because we can come up with lots and lots of interesting unique patterns here. We can come over to our wavetable where our my current synth idea is and the chords and on here, we can drop a couple of things. Let's say we go to the audio effects and we grab a filter uh, over here. And let's also have then the gate so we can kind of look at this track in a couple of ways of what how it could affect the synth and the chords, right? And so what we're going to do is this operator track, we're now going to call it, um, let's call it the gate input, right? And this is perhaps something you've seen before. It's I'm not inventing something new here. In fact, this whole technique has its roots in trance and it was called the trance gate. And there are many, many tracks with the, you know, famous kind of gated vocals, gated synths um, that uh, tip their head to it. And again, coming back to our friend's bicep, that's they're, they're like me. They started out in the 90s and they are kind of nostalgic in a lot of what they their moves in the music, they're drawn to analog, they're drawn to things like trance gates. So if we have this gate input now, what we can do over here on the wavetable track is we could try out a couple of things. So first of all, we could have a gate as a way to change how these chord, this chords and synth sounds. And again, what we might do is keep the wavetable really basic for now, the sound, and then we can again work on the synth sound itself in a little bit. But for now, let's have a listen to gate. So if we have the gate, really important is that we open up the side chain and we turn it on. And the side chain is what do you think going to be listening to? If your answer is the gate input, you would be right. So we want to say audio from the gate input in this list here. And now this gate device after the synth is listening to that, those MIDI triggers. Right. And the old 
fashion way to do this like and again but I know that bicep are doing this in their studio this could be a hi-hat pattern on a 909 or 808 so this is the hi-hats and you make the pattern on the drum machine and then you send that midi out of that hi-hat pattern to do exactly kind of what we're doing so it's the same pattern here but it would be maybe made on your drum machine right you can send triggers midi triggers this these are midi triggers here inside of the software they're doing it with hardware so really great way to kind of come up with many many interesting ideas right so if we hit kind of play now let's turn that vocal off for the moment and as you can hear we've kind of lost our chords and that's because the gate is now chopping it off so what we want to do is bring our threshold down over here in the gate so we're kind of engaging the top of the the chords a bit like that right and now if we go back to our gate input track let's say we open up a new midi track and we make some new triggers so again 16th notes let's say let's duplicate this four bars and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make a new pattern let's make it lots of steps other way Right, so you could go on for days here playing around with these tools in 12 and coming up with some really interesting gate patterns, right? That suit what you're looking for. I actually just realized my steps are eight, so I want 16, so I want a little bit faster on my gate triggers. There we go. There we go. And again, if you hear a section you like here, think more successfully is this area over here. And now we've got a nice gate trigger, right? Made using those kind of tools that we have here in Ableton 12, if you are working with that sim. Heath, I'm impressed by your teaching. I'm a primary school teacher myself, so I value clarity and modeling, just the right balance of saying and doing. Thank you very much. Really appreciate your feedback. It, it means a lot. Thank you. Right, and I guess one of the things to point out is if you go through the process of this gate method, so we've got this operator here, we've got these MIDI triggers, which as you can see are very malleable. We can make as many trigger clips as we like. If you don't have Ableton Live 12, you can still make your own MIDI triggers, right? Um, in many ways, actually. This is just a, a kind of creative, clever way of kind of using those tools, the, the Ableton 12 tools to kind of come up with something, um, you know, uh, that, as I said, it's quite interesting and it kind of puts these things to use. It's a, a use case scenario for some of these things. So I'm quite happy with this gate input trigger. What I was going to say, and I lost track a little bit, sorry about that, is that because it's MIDI and we've got a synth on here, we're not listening to this synth, but it does mean that the synth also can play a role in the sense of, it's a little bit more technical advanced, but if we play this trigger track, let's just do just the synth and I adjust the synth itself it should change also a little bit how that sounds right and so that's kind of a real big advantage here of doing this in midi because i can use the volume envelope of this synth and the oscillator to So it helps.
in a way that uh, you won't get if we were using an audio track as the trigger, which is also a possibility, right? So in this case, we've got a lot of what I would call malle malleability or flexibility. So, you know, if we dot, put our creative caps on and start thinking about things here, I could put an LFO after that synth that I'm sort of messing around with a bit here, um, the, the gate input, the triggers, and let's we could also call this maybe it's easier or let's let's name this clip just so we know what it is you know trigger one or one trigger um, so we know what that is doing and then we could map this LFO to the decay there and that should start to fluctuate what that what, what I was just doing sort of manually with the mouse So we've now got kind of some randomization of that. We can slow the LFO down and make it. Change it from sine wave to something like random so it's completely random. Needs a bit of adjustment. Let's put it back to a sign for a second so it's a bit more consistent. So that's the kind of idea. So it's now got a little bit more kind of like variation to it that it didn't have before. Okay, so let's try out another trick here. That's the gate method. So we've got the gate kind of working and just to point out a couple of other um, parameters of the gate. You know, if we adjust the attack, hold and release here, we get a lot of different behavior. The threshold decides how much of the input is affecting the output of the synth here. But if we make the release longer, it has that feel to it. If we make the release shorter, it's going to be more glitchy and sharp, choppy. And if we move the attack, we can slow that phase down, turn that vocal off again. So there's a lot of different shape in there, right? Okay, so, almost went down a bit of a rabbit hole there. Sim, I'm struggling to find a vocalist for an electronical project I'm working on here. I've tried all Facebook groups and Van Mix without much luck. Any advice with forums or platforms? I think, to be honest, like, um, it's always a bit, uh, 
hit and miss sort of a, a lot of the platforms out there when you're searching for vocalists to work on projects. Uh, I would suggest maybe Fiverr is worth a look if you're familiar with that platform, fiverr.com. I'll just pop the basics in the chat here. Um, actually, I'll... You can often, you know, mixed results, but you can often find potentially good results on Fiverr. Otherwise, um, what I've kind of been doing myself is, you know, obviously going through the charts and SoundCloud and whenever I find sort of a vocalist that uh, is, is the texture and sound and uh, tonality that I'm looking for, I then, you know, direct message them on Instagram or reach out to them, try and find a way to reach out with them and then discuss your project with them and see where it goes from there. There are a lot of great vocalists out there, but as I said, yes, um, some of the platforms are quite hit and miss. I think, as I said, Fiverr, there's quite a lot of people offering services on there that could be quite good and it could also be um, not an you know, too much expense to try out a few. And if that doesn't work out, then, you know, um, obviously you can kind of, you know, move on without it being sort of, you know, uh, too, too expensive in the sense that you hired a vocalist that cost an awful lot of money and then it didn't work out, right? So something to, to consider there as well. All right, so on the gate here, I'm gonna switch it off now. And I did bring a filter over here as well as another possibility. So the filter underused by quite a lot of people, I think, in this particular way. And that is if we op turn the filter on the auto Ableton's auto filter, it has a side chain as well. And we can ask it the same as the gate to be side chained to the input track, our friend over here in the trigger. And a couple of things we probably need to do, open the em filter envelope up quite a lot. And let's see if we can get it to sort of sound right. Also really nice and this volume is quite important uh, sorry the envelope as you can hear with that off you're not really going to get the action I'm looking for but in this case you can hear the filters opening and closing with that trigger input so if we change the input that first trigger import, but unfortunately that's in eighth note, so I probably wouldn't be using it because it's not quite the reaction on what I was looking for. This is a lot closer to what I'm looking for there. And you start to get the feeling of that kind of bicep sort of sound. Right, and this is without, and it's different to the gate, right? So if we, if, Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll have a think about it for you, Sim, and I'll uh, come back to you on that. I can write in the comments later if I have an idea and a suggestion for you. So let's listen to the comparison between the filter. Right, so that's a personal taste thing. The gate is obviously a lot choppier in this case, but the filter's kind of nice for different reasons. synth a little bit more interesting.
Love the RAW, by the way. Absolutely amazing device. It's kind of, for me, literally, I don't get any commission for saying so, but it's worth buying, uh, upgrading to 12 just for RAW. It's like, there are a few devices that I have in my toolbox that are something that you can grow into and develop further and further into what it can offer. And RAW is just one of those. It's tip of the iceberg here. Perhaps I can do a rundown one day of what you can get out of it. And it's an awful lot. Um, I don't think uh, anyone could say that they're bored with it already because they know what it does, right? It's one of these kind of like gifts that keep giving, even keep, keep, keep on giving. Yeah, adding a resonator behind this. So I've just explaining, just thought to stop for a second, explain what I'm doing. I'll just pop back over to the vocal. Uh, use the shifter to pitch it down slightly, which is my preference to pitching, re-pitching the vocals as opposed to pitching it with this knob here um, in the audio clip envelope properties. I think it does a much more professional sounding re-pitch in this case. Um, so that's what I've chosen to do there. And then I was thinking just off the cuff there to maybe have a bit of a resonator on here just to kind of make the vocal a little bit, uh, you know, ethereal or out of this world sounding. So it's not quite as, as stock standard as it, as it was. Yeah, so it could be really interesting with the resonator on this or some some form of it's going to go through presets for a second Yeah, could be an idea. Need to work on that a little bit, but also we could try a bit of hybrid reverb, which I probably have here anyway. 
and we can turn it into shimmer. Just add a bit of a dreamy sort of tail to it. Cool. Uh, okay, back over to the main synth or the chords. So we've got this choice of using the triggers with the filter side chain or the gate. But let's try another thing that uh, echoes a little bit too wonky, the modulation on it. Let's just bring that back down a bit. Okay, so let's copy this chord track over one more time. So let's say Command D. We still don't have a bass line yet. Um, so probably this is the kind of track that's going to suit a very, very simple bass line. I'm just going to get rid of that pop-up piano from this track so that we don't get all that stuff. All of these things can be switched off, all the processing, because I've just copied over the actual synth track over here. What's happened there? Let me just see. That looks um, something odd happen there. Let's just go backwards. Okay, interesting. Let's get rid of that track and let's say we don't want it as an in, it's just an auto track. Let's just make sure we haven't lost anything here. And because that just happens, I think it's a good message to do a bit of a save. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever felt that, but that feels like one of these times where it would be a good idea to have a save happen otherwise we might be losing a bunch of work here so let's just say weekly stream oh, weekly stream number 10 I can't spell today it seems weekly stream 10 2024 uh, into that folder save it we'll wait for that we can save delete there that I'm okay with that file and then save live set as to render all of the parts into a proper project folder. Hope you guys and girls are doing that. That's the right way to kind of save a proper project save, right? Okay, so let's try again. We'll copy the chord track over. Rev all this stuff and hopefully if it didn't, it did do the same thing. Interesting. Okay, it's interesting. So on this one, I'm not, not sure, that's a bit of a funny little glitch that it does there, but um, we can recover from it. So we're going to get rid of that pop-up piano. Maybe that's kind of what seems to be perhaps doing something odd there. By the way, if you're enjoying the content on this channel and today's live stream, week 10, uh, weekly stream number 10, do give the video a thumbs up, a, a like, comment and subscribe so you know when the next video is coming out, be much appreciated. All right, so over on this copy of the chords track, let's do one other move. I've got more plans for this, so I really actually want this another time. And the final one of these would come over here. I don't think I'm going to get to it today, which means probably the next stream we can pick up from where I left off. This one, this chord progression here is going to end up becoming the bass at some point. And so I would take all of these lovely chords, bring them down into baseline-ish territory, and have the root notes, and it's probably likely to be a root note kind of bass line that we're going to have on this track that 
maybe a little bit Reese sounding, something that gives some space to everything else so we can just pop a basic wavetable there um, for now. We need to come back and work on that. Yeah, so I'll come back and work on that, but that's going to be something like just, just the basic root note following bass line of sorts. But back to this duplicate of the chord track, there are my nice chords. Let's maybe pop them up an octave. We haven't used that octave yet. Let's have the wavetable off of here and we'll start with, I don't know, let's have analog here instead or collision or something. No, collision could be interesting. Let's have a collision on here. So we want to go to the instruments. Wait for it to get itself together there. Hello. All right, definitely seems to be a little bit strange at the moment. Hmm. No filters. Well, I don't believe that it doesn't exist. Um, we had a moment ago all the everything. So let's try it from here. Let's take that away. Maybe that was the problem. It doesn't still doesn't look like it. Let's see if we can search it out. Okay, so we want Ableton and we want the instrument ideally. Hmm. So Ableton's had some kind of crash here. So my options would be to reload it or just use something else for now, but um, very odd. Um, let's try again over here. Okay. So what we might try and do is just try and reload this synth set. Otherwise that might be the end of today's stream, but uh, hopefully not. All right, let's see. Yeah, it's definitely, it looks like it's a bit buggy with those um, piano, pop-up pianos. I thought I did delete them all. Maybe not, there's one still there. Obviously I didn't have my baseline now, that's what it just, um, I should have saved. Okay, so let's duplicate one here. This is all happening in real time. That's what often happens sometimes um, in real time. So let's take the, let's leave the wavetable there in case we can't manage to get a synth happening over here. Let's put our chord track over to there. Prepare it for the bass. Pop it down there. Similar thing, all of this processing is going to get switched off. And the wavetable off, we're going to come back to that. We can call it the bass. That's what it's going to end up being, a root note. Bass of sorts. Let's color it up a bit. Let's also do that here. Okay, so we'll come back over to this one. Let's duplicate it. And let's have on this one the chords up and up here. Processing switched off. Let's see. Again, we seem to have no instruments. Very weird. Uh, something's definitely gone odd, as I said, in here. So what I'm going to do as it's doing that, um, I still have a synth here. So I'm just going to use the wavetable that's here, but I'll just do a quick little undo of some of the work I've done on it. So I really almost want just a neutral kind of synth. What else have we got? Some transposition, filter frequencies. We can switch that off. And in the matrix, we've got a bit of modulation. Let's get rid of that. So, and we've also got unison. All right, so now we should be almost apart from this sign synced sign here. So we can now say it's pretty much a basic wavetable. All right, so on this second one here with now the higher chords. And 
the original chord progression, what I wanted to try and see here is if we can extract a melody and yeah, I'm not going to get a melody out of it because of the fact that I can't <laughs> can't get into my all my devices and stuff. So it looks like a proper proper crash of some sorts that I need to back out of. So look, I think everything's telling me here that for today I've kind of reached the threshold. I'll just make a note of what I'm going to do here because this track here is going to end up becoming the melody. So if you're curious. Uh, definitely in next week's live stream, I will find out whatever the bug is, whatever's happened here where I can't search my currently my instruments and all that kind of thing, which is a bit weird. Um, I'll find out what's happened and then I need to I'll mark these in a certain color. So we're going to come back and revisit that track and create a melody out of the chord progression. And the same over here, I'm going to revisit this track and create a bass line. That's if you'd like to see that. I mean, at the moment, what have we got? realize what was wrong that was this track that we haven't worked on yet so just a little bit of a recap you know, we set out today or I set out today to try and sort of start off a new idea from scratch. This is a new idea from zero. Uh, the only thing was that, that I was inspired today to sort of create something that tips the cap to the amazing artists in the electronica scene, such as Bicep, Over Mono, Joy Orbison. Um, and I've kind of worked my way along from starting with a chord progression that I played in, then revoiced a little bit to make it nice and smooth, uh, quantized it a little bit. And then from that chord progression, we kind of went, worked our way towards a, a break beat uh, using some 808 sounds here, rim shot, kick, and a closed hi-hat from an 808 kit. So nodding our head to a traditional drum machine. I layered the rim shot with a clap from outside of the 808 drum machine. And then I created some interesting percussion loops. So this is a percussion loop that was generated from picking an audio percussion loop. Um, so we can actually see drum on ensemble dry. It's this loop over here, which was a, a normal percussion audio loop that I've sliced to MIDI so that I can work with it in a different way. And then I generated a sequence for it and a couple of different patterns that we've got there. And then I worked with a tabla sample in a similar way, created a sequence for it. And those two are kind of having this conversation between the two of them. So these two are playing when each other isn't. It's a little overlap, but not a lot. So they're kind of talking with each other, which I think is nice. Right, and then I've kind of gone through with the chord track and then sort of looked at, well, I also brought out Paul Stretch, an amazing device, and I sampled the chords, very simple synth into audio with Paul Stretch, stretched out the chord progression, same chord progression, turned it into a drone, pad drone sort of sound uh, that we've got a couple of variations of. And then I revisited the chord track, made the synth sound a bit better, added some processing, and then I've walked you through how to create a MIDI gate input track created some triggers, which is then triggering either the auto filter or the gate over on this chord progression. Still to come, melody, and still to come, baseline. And then I think this idea really pulls together in a nice direction. So just a little playthrough. And the vocal, sorry. Thank you. 
You can hear the parts, how they can work together on their own, you know, thinking forwards to the arrangement. We've got a nice sort of kind of rolling groove here. And arguably it should sound nice when we get the you know low ends of the baseline kind of fitting in there because something that's really I've kind of deliberately decided here as I've been going along is you know look at the piano roll here and you know my chords are sitting right in the kind of middle uh, the melody is going to be a little bit on top of that this pad drone is pitched a bit below the chords and then there should be space down here for the bass and then our kick is sitting there so it's nicely kind of spread out all right well ladies and gents folks friends thank you very much for tuning in and joining this week's live stream i hope you've enjoyed it i hope you've found it beneficial to your workflow to help you make the music you want to make um, please do if you enjoyed the content like comment and subscribe it helps the channel a lot share the video with a friend and i will look forward to next week's stream where ideally i'm going to pick up where i left off here and it will probably i think overlap a bit i'll probably jump straight from that baseline melody into arranging and then we'll just you know the idea today was come up with a track that i can then work on over the next few weeks and get it to a finished track so Thanks very much. I wish you a great rest of your Sunday and I will catch you in the next stream. Thank you. Bye for now. Ciao. Bye.